Hi folks, Ash from Glass Fusion here again. Just uh, doing up a quick one about the RTC 1000 controller and how to get it running. So once again, this one's just running on uh, a simple setup with a little transformer just to give it power. Uh, as you can see at the moment it says it's 7 degrees. That's really generous. It's in the middle of the Canberra winter. So, to get it to run, all we've done is hooked up uh, the ground and 12 and 12 volt positives and this little loop of wire here is the thermocouple uh, self-test. We've also just got a single relay just so we can hear some clicking noises once we've successfully got it up and running. Alrighty, to play with these ones uh, we've got the enter button down here. We press enter, we then press zero, you come to this CHG which is where you can choose either Celsius or Fahrenheit. Alrighty, as for the basic programming of this kiln, all we need to do is press enter. We press 4 for ramp hold. We're going to go for user 2 on this one, just so it's a new one. We're going to say, let's go 2 segments. First ramp will just run with 278. And we're going to go up to, let's say, 600 degrees. And we'll hold there for 12 minutes. Alright, ramp 2 again. Let's change it up a little bit and say we're going to go 800 degrees an hour. And we're going to go up this time to 1200 and we'll say 80. And hold for 12 minutes. Uh, you can change that to let's say hold for 5 minutes. This is an alarm temperature. You want to set this temperature just so you can uh, make sure it's not going to go over. It's a highly unlikely event. But you can put an alarm in, so let's go 1285. It goes back to idle, unlike the uh, the 3 key. To get it to run, all we have to do is press enter and enter. It'll say on, and this little relay should click. I was touching it, but it wasn't me. We'll hang on for a second and the relay should click again. So if you did have that hooked up to a kiln, you would now be firing. Alrighty folks, it was quick, but uh, that's about it. Thank you very much. So I did actually think of one more thing. This little jumper here, which is located just opposite from the green. So we've got the green and then we've got the two jumpers. If you're running a Type S thermocouple, you need to put the jumper so it's covering both the pegs, like that. And if you're running a Type K, you just want the jumper on one peg just so it's not jumper.